Hi everyone, Luke here from Weekend Tour Pros. We're back in the studio at City Golf in Chichester and this time we are filming a training aid review. We're at the winter of 2023, the golf season is ending and many of us will be thinking about working on changes to our swing in preparation for the 2024 golf season. And I therefore think now is a great time to start some training aid reviews. Now the training aid that we're reviewing today is the Tour Striker Smart Ball. This isn't a brand new training aid, it's been out on the market for quite a number of years now, but you may see this training aid time and time again if you're ever watching live on the range on the PGA Tour, the DP World Tour, or any of the other professional golf tours around the world, you may see professional golfers using this training aid and thought, why are they using it? What benefit does it offer? And maybe that could be a training aid that would help me as the average amateur golfer watching down the lens over the winter season. And hopefully we'll be able to answer all of those questions for you today. Right, let's get stuck in. So before we start diving into some drills, I just want to show you what came in the package when I bought this. Now I have had this one for a couple of years, so things may have changed ever so slightly, but effectively what came is a tour striker ball, which is attached via a little kind of clip to a lanyard that is adjustable. Now the way you set this ball up is you simply blow up the ball, which I'll do for you now. Give me a few seconds. There we go. That took me, what, 10 seconds. Get the lanyard, pop it round your neck and away you go. Now, because I've got a hood on and a hat on today, I'm just gonna take those off. So now we've got it set up, how does the tour striker work? It's quite simple, really. All you effectively are trying to do is during your golf swing is pinch this just between your elbows, top of your forearms, with your golf swing, and the idea is that it's gonna hopefully allow you to make a slightly more connected swing between your body and your arms and stop a lot of the moves that many amateur golfers make, such as the chicken wing, where that elbow kind of flails out and we become steep in the downswing. It's also gonna hopefully encourage us to kind of stay through the shot by keeping everything connected, and they do claim that it will help you kind of promote you to swing a little bit more from the inside. So if you're someone that comes a little bit over the top, a little bit slicey, hopefully it's gonna help with that too. And I'll hit some shots in a second. We'll use TrackMan to see if we're getting those feels itself. The device itself is quite pricey for what it is. In the UK at the moment, it's on sale on Tour Striker's website for 40 pounds, which effectively what you're getting is a very small inflatable black ball, you know, feels like if you bought a full-size inflatable ball somewhere, it'd be a couple of quid on effectively a lanyard. What I would say with that in mind is there are kind of fakes or rip-offs that are available on the market that are much cheaper than the actual price of the Tour Striker. I've never used one of them. I can't vouch for the quality. I can't vouch for whether they have the same effects, but on paper, they do look very similar. There are also other training aids that do a very similar thing. So there are balls that you can just place between your elbows. Some of them have little cutouts and things like that that you may have used with a teacher before. And they are also things that, again, are worth considering as an alternative. But again, I've never used them, so I can't vouch for them. So in terms of the price, I do think it is a little bit overpriced for effectively the price it probably costs to make. But I think the view you've got to take with any training aid is look at the price of the training aid versus whether you would pay that to make improvements to your golf game. So if this training aid can help you make some significant improvements to your golf game, lower that handicap by a couple of shots, get rid of that dreaded miss that you hate, then I definitely think £40 is worth it. But if we are just looking at the construction and the quality of the materials, I do think it is a little bit overpriced. So please do bear that in mind. We're going to do three types of tests today. We're going to start by doing some short games, some chipping, because I think it really, really is useful there, particularly on a shot where you're not at full speed. We'll then work our way up to sort of some full shots with maybe a wedge or a, a, a sort of a short iron. And then what we're also going to do is show you how you can use this for putting as well, because it is something that can be used in all parts of your game. Right, let's set up the first test and let's hit some shots. Right, let's start with some before shots with 60 degree wedge. And we're just going to kind of hit you know, a, a small pitch shot here and just see what happens. Right, so we've baselined some numbers with me using the, without using the smart ball. And now what I'm gonna do is pop it in, squeeze it again with those elbows, get into my position and now just try and hit that same sort of 25, 30 yard pitch shot, doing exactly the same thing, but with the ball and just keeping it in place and seeing what it does. And don't be surprised if the first couple aren't great here, guys, because it might mean that I need to move my body in a different way to what I'm used to. 
really struggling here at the moment, which again probably says the deficiency in this part of my game. To get a clean, crisp strike, I'm hitting these quite a little bit thin. But once again, what you can see from the rotation is that my path is virtually zero. My face is only 1.1 degrees shut and we're ultimately 0.5 and we've hit it straight. Now, again, we need to add in strike to this to make it kind of probably give you the confidence that it's helping, but it's definitely kind of straightening everything up in my swing and chain causing kind of path and face issues to be addressed. Found a little bit of strike there. That's got a little bit better though, and I can really can feel though, it wanting to turn my chest through. That felt nice. And it really is a kind of at that point of transition. It really is feeling like I'm having to, my trail elbow, it, it probably wants to lose the ball that way and do that slight chicken wing movement. And it definitely feels like it is holding it in there. Again, it does feel like I am really getting chest to target a lot more so than I would do normally. Strike is coming a little bit there because that was a little bit crisper, felt like a little bit more effortless kind of power there really, which is one of the things that actually, you know, they do say with Tor Striker on their website that once you start to get this feeling, it does start to feel like power comes effortless. So for me there, a couple of things, again, we'll look at the data in a minute, but definitely seeing that it's moving my path more into out on this type of shot, definitely feel like I'm turning way through it. And it did take me a few shots to get strike, but we're now starting to see strike. Now strike might be a little bit inconsistent at the moment, but it's definitely coming there. And interesting how many of the shots have gone straight. So what we'll do now is we'll take the smart ball away. We'll try and hit some shots, maintaining that same feeling of that elbow feeling squeezed in, turning that chest through, and we'll see if we can maintain some of the results and see how that differs from the batch of shots I hit at the beginning to baseline. Squeeze, turn. That strike does feel a little bit crisper though than it did feel when I had the constraint there. Squeeze, turn. Caught that a little bit clean. Rotate. Again, a fraction clean, but I'll be surprised if we haven't delivered that with a path out to the left. So I just want to show you the summary data from TrackMan from that short game shot using the Tor Striker. And what you can see here is the data sets before, during and after. And there's two data points I want to show you just to really bring to life the benefits of this training aid. The first one of those is the smash factor. What you can see is that the lowest value that I had of 0.88 was before I started using the Tor Striker. And then it went up to 0.95 while I was using the Tor Striker. And even when I took it away, it was maintaining a really high value of 0.92 not quite as good as when I was using it and that says to me I'd need to drill these feelings a little bit more and use the tour strike a little bit more but it definitely was an improvement from where we were at the beginning and that smash factor is hopefully demonstrating the overall quality of strike on this short game shot. The second data parameter I want to show you is the path and the face. You can definitely see at the beginning that I was coming across the ball and with a closed face at 2.1 and 1.5. You then added the tour striker in and my path moved significantly to the left. So it was moving from in to out exactly like I want to. And I was delivering a really neutral face to that path, which was slightly open and giving me a slightly better ball flight on that short game shot. When we did take the tour striker away, I was able to maintain most of that path improvement, still a 2.7 degree improvement from where we were at the beginning. And I was able to deliver a slightly better face angle improvement to where we were at the beginning, but definitely the face angle did get lost from when we were using the tour striker. And that's something again, that I'd have to continue to drill. What I want to show you now is what happens when we go up to full shots, because this is where I find it a little bit more difficult, which again, maybe says something about me as the mid handicap golfer here. But we'll take the jumper off because we're starting to warm up. I'm going to move up to just a full pitching wedge and we're going to repeat the same test and see what happens. Right, let's baseline a few pitching wedges. And now we've got the tour striker in, we're going to try and hit some shots, holding it throughout the swing and see what happens. And again, it might take me a few shots to get used to doing this. This is the first time I've hit full shots using this training aid for some time now. So let's see what happens. God, that feels so alien to me. Absolutely thin that second one. First one we've delivered a bit of a strike on. 
And if I'm honest with you, it did still feel like a partial swing and my club head speed is down, but my ball speed relative to my club head speed and my smash factor as a result, I think is gonna be one of the highest that I've hit so far. We did have that path slightly from the outside. We did have that face slightly open as well. And as a result, we have hit a little bit of a push cut down the left. Look at that again, ball speed of over 90, probably joint highest I've hit today. It is a slightly smothered closed one, but Interestingly, again, the path now is moving more and more left, minus, uh, minus 3.4. That really is coming from the inside. The smash factor is up to 1.3. The carry is as good as it's been all day. Ball speed's even higher that time, 91.5 mile an hour ball speed. Well, that felt lovely. That one felt nice. Yeah, and the ball speed's back up above that 90 mile an hour. The path is out to the left. Face is very neutral, and that's why we're hitting that little baby draw. So effectively achieving all the things we want to do, and it therefore is doing it. The question now then is, let's take it away and see if I can maintain those feels, or if they do go back to how they were before. Right, so we're taking the tour striker off. Keen to really see if we maintain that path angle coming from the inside. So first shot without it, definitely felt like the strike was better than the batch of shots I was hitting before. Ball speed at 88.9 is a little bit lower than we had on some of the good hits with the ball. And that smash factor is a little bit down as a result, but the carry number and the path at minus one shows that we did hit it from the inside. Caught that really clean, unfortunately. So hopefully what we can see from here is it's an it feels alien to me while using it. It feels horrible if I'm honest with you, which probably says there's some deficiencies in my swing that it really needs helping with. To replicate that sort of feeling of everything being squeezed together here and as I take the club away, keeping these arms together throughout the whole swing, it really does feel alien. But what we can see is that on the good hits, there definitely is a change to that path. There is an improvement to that attack angle and there is some improvement to strike just not as good as with the ball there, which is really interesting considering how horrible it felt when I was using it. And that's a great one, hopefully, to finish on. Right, before we finish the kind of longer shots using the tour striker and move on to the putting, let's just have a little look at that data side by side, see how it compares and see the changes that the tour striker helped me with in the space of about 10 to 15 minutes effectively. So just like on that short game shot, I wanna focus in on two data parameters. Firstly, the smash factor, where we can see exactly the same results that we saw in that short game shot. The smash factor was at its lowest before we started using the tour striker at 1.17. It was at its best during the shots we hit with the tour striker attached to me at 1.25 and then it did drop off slightly to 1.21 once we took it away but that was a significant improvement from where we started from again in the space of about 20 to 25 shots. If we then just move across and look at path face angle and ultimately the relationship between face to path what you can see at the beginning is that I was delivering the club path out to in so cutting across the golf ball and then delivering up an open face to that and hitting slight cuts which could become slices as we move up through the rest of the golf bag. When we then started using the tour striker, you were able to see that I was able to generate a path that was in to out, so promoting that slightly baby draw shape, and I was delivering still though quite a closed club face at 0.8 degrees, and as a result there was quite a big gap between face to path, but we were hitting a baby draw while we were doing that. Interestingly though, when we took the tour striker away, I was able to maintain that path at minus 0.8, obviously not as good as when the tour striker was there, but still really good. But actually I also delivered a slightly open face once I took it away as well. And as a result, there's a really neutral face to path relationship there that would just promote that really, really subtle baby draw, which I would absolutely love to see. Again, that's all in the space of 15 minutes and a small batch of shots. So we've already spoke about how the Tour Striker Smart Ball can be used with the short game, chipping, pitching, and then the longer game. One of the things I do really, really like about this training aid though is it's also usable with putting. Now, one of the things I find is that when I'm putting, I don't necessarily have my body connected and it can sometimes become quite an armsy putt. And actually that's something that's changed quite significantly for me with some of the recent putting changes that I've had having a lesson. But I do feel that this kind of also complements that. And if I'm honest with you, I actually find probably more benefit when I've had a go with it using it with putting than I potentially have with long game. And that says more about me and how I react to this type of training aid than actually the training aid itself. But with the putting, 
very, very similar to how we use it on all other aspects. We've got ourselves on the putting platform here, probably somewhere in the region of about a 12 foot putt, so not necessarily expecting to hold all of these. Just again, exactly the same things, get that sort of shoulder squeeze in. In my case here, because of my putting stance, I actually can also feel the ball sort of connected to my chest as well, um, sort of lower chest, the sternum area. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna make all three of these bits feel connected. So if I now just hit that putt for you, Just missed that one a little bit to the left-hand side. Again, not expecting to hold every one of these, but the one thing I would say with this training aid is, if you've watched any of my videos recently on the course, um, or, or when I actually putt normally, I feel that when I'm putting well, my miss, if I do miss, is actually I do miss on the push side for me. When I'm putting not great, I do tend to pull across the putts a little bit. So for me, one thing I find when, as soon as I put this tour striker in, is it's very, very rare or if almost impossible that I miss the putts on the pool side for me as a left-handed golfer. But let's get that in again. Line that up. Connected rock back and through. Just missed that one again on the left lip. Hit a couple more. The one thing I do think with this training aid, and I think this is gonna come across across all the video, is it is sometimes a little bit fiddly to get it into place, as you can probably see. That time it snuck in straight away, but sometimes it is a little bit difficult. And let's see if we can get that rock going again, connected. Missed that one on the left-hand side again. Again, I would like to hold one, but for me personally, the fact that I'm seeing that as the miss at the moment says that I can just adjust my aim a little bit. Let's get this in, get it connected. And then let's see if we can hold the last one. Oh, just dribbled off to the left. And the key thing with any training aid though is not just your ability to have a good technique when you're using the training aid, it's your ability to then maintain that technique when you take the training aid away. So what we're gonna do now is take the training aid off, hit a couple more putts and see if I can maintain that feel of, in particular for me, arms and chest with the putter feeling connected and it feeling like a really nice smooth rotational putting stroke for me rather than what I used to do if I take the ball away would be very armsy and very much putting like this. So let's have a little go at that now. Right, so smart ball taken away. I'm gonna feel like those arms are squeezed, connected to my body and that chest, and I'm just gonna try and have that gentle rocking motion that I had the feeling of from the smart ball. Again, just missed left edge, but as someone, again, like I say, who when he putts badly feels like he has a touch of the pulls, I'm not too disappointed with that. And I definitely felt like there was a connection there of that sort of turn with the chest and the arms being connected, which is sometimes something I don't feel again when I'm putting not at my best. Oh, left edge again, couple more. But again, this is probably one part of the game where I am finding it easy to translate that feeling from the smart ball back into my normal game. And he says that when he hits probably the one bad putt that felt slightly disconnected, which is interesting because I wonder if that says that the feeling, I've struggled to hold it for more than a couple of putts, but let's really focus on it on this last one. That felt almost too much the other way. I've probably not demonstrated it perfectly there because I've not held a lot of putts, but I think you can see how this training aid can be used also with the putting aspect of your game. In terms of my concluding thoughts on the Tour Striker Smart Ball, this is all gonna depend on you. Price point for the product on its own, I think is a little bit steep, and I definitely think if it was nearer 15 pounds, that would be a fairer mark. But if the changes that you're trying to make are the changes that I've been able to demonstrate that I can do, you know, I filmed this whole video, including all those shots in the space of about 45 minutes, including the putting, then hopefully what you can see is that there are some benefits to a ball like this, particularly if you took it to the driving range with you and used it during your range sessions throughout the whole winter, I'm sure you can really drill some good feels there because I've been able to drill just a few in a short space of time. In terms of, for me, would I buy the training aid? It's a really interesting one. If I hadn't got it already, would I buy it? It is a really interesting one because the thing, again, like I say, for me, is I find training aids and drills better when I'm allowed to swing freely and I've got a constraint. So you may have seen my review of the swing plate, which if you haven't, I'll put a link to it up there, where you're effectively trying to make sure you bring the club down on the inside of a stick. 
that's a little bit better for me to do because my body is free and therefore taking the stick away does maintain the same feel because I'm getting the feel from how I move the body with the constraint there. When I have something like the tour striker where I've got to do something to myself, it feels like, okay, when I take that away, can I really pinch that and can I hold it? And am I pinching it the same way? And as soon as you hit a few bad, I start to second guess it a little bit. That's me personally. If you're someone that's used a, a kind of training aid that adds a constraint to your swing before when it's actually on your body and you found that works for you, then I have absolutely no doubt you'll have no issues with this as well. All that remains for me to say is if you like the video, please do hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not yet subscribed to Weekend Tour Pro, do subscribe. We've got loads of great content on the channel from product reviews of balls, clubs, training aids, and loads of really hopefully entertaining, fun, relatable on-course content as well. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Goodbye.